Hello, everyone. So thank you for, uh, for being here. It's the last talk of, uh, of the conference. Thanks a lot for, uh, for you, for all the hard work that you have been doing. And thanks for, uh, for DevConf. Uh, it has been uh, really amazing. I arrived on Saturday. So I don't know, for you that have been uh, here from uh, Friday, you know, you, you are heroes. That's, I mean, it's, uh, it's great. OK, so I'll try to, um, to present you uh, some things that we have been doing in an, op in an, open, um, in an open source uh, uh, wide project, in a European project that we have been working. Um, so we are going to talk about uh, Edge Cloud Continuum. We are going to talk about uh, serverless. And we are going to talk about how to design fast applications in, uh, in visual programming uh, flows. Okay? Um, so my, my name is Yanis Georgiou. This is a presentation that we have uh, done with uh, um, colleagues from Harakopio University, George, and from Red Hat, uh, Luis. And um, uh, this is uh, an agenda for an initial agenda. So uh, we are going to start from a high-level view of the physics uh, project. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the details on the design environment. Um, how this is, uh, is done. And then we are going to dig a little bit deeper into, onto how the infrastructure services take place. Um, we'll see some performance aspects and then we, uh, we are going to discuss some uh, optimizations we have been doing in, uh, on, in terms of placement and scheduling. Okay, so a physics project, it's, it's the acronym, so it's the real name of the project is Optimized Hybrid Space Time Service Continuum in uh, FAS, okay, FAS as function as a service. Um, some of the main uh, challenges that we have uh, tried to target uh, with, uh, with this European project, um, so we want to abstract the usage of uh, service offerings, okay, service offerings and clusters across, across the continuum. So when we talk about continuum, we talk about edge, uh, cloud, and premise uh, clusters. And, um, and when we talk about service offerings, we, we are talking about how to design applications in this type of uh, environments. Okay? Um, and now, the users are not always experts. Okay? So that's why we are talking about abstractions here. Uh, so there could be data scientists that have a specific expertise uh, um, on how to, uh, uh, to create artificial intelligence uh, applications, but they might not know how to actually deploy them and uh, even more how to deploy them on, in a complex scenario with edge cloud clusters. Yeah? Um, we, um, we are talking about uh, one of the challenges is the adaptation of code uh, in, in serverless computing uh, paradigms. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you have heard of there are, op there are open source uh, serverless uh, uh, platforms. There are also uh, service offered in the cloud. Um, here we have taken an, a particular open source uh, approach. Um, uh, one of one other challenge is the investigation of space and time. Okay, uh, space in terms of location of execution and time in terms of duration of execution. These are things that we, we, we try to tackle. Um, and again, uh, taking into account uh, the whole continuum, things are much more complex. Um, optimization of uh, resource selection and operation. So we do have two different levels, the global level, taking into consideration the whole uh, uh, continuum, the different clusters in parallel, and the local level when we go and execute directly upon a specific cluster. And finally, um, how to reuse uh, new artifacts, how to reuse the, the particular uh, channels and uh, artifacts that we are going to, uh, to, to create. Okay, the, the goals of the project, uh, visual programming environment to create uh, workflows okay, with uh, patterns that can be reused, with semantics that can be increased, and how we can facilitate uh, uh, the, the, developer the developers, how we can uh, enhance the development experience with uh, this type of uh, environments. Uh, pro platform level functionalities uh, that will allow us to orchestrate in a, in a clouded uh, interplay and um, a more provider uh, local resource management in order to be able to, uh, to offer 
specific optimization while we execute uh, the services. Yeah. Um, okay, for those of you that uh, aren't that aware, um, uh, Europe provides uh, fu fundings for uh, projects, and uh, this uh, Horizon Age 2020 project, it, it is a research and innovation action um, with a project budget uh, funded completely for all uh, the partners that uh, have been uh, that are participating to it. Um, we are 14 partners with uh, large companies such as uh, GFT, Atos, uh, HPE, Red Hat, and Fujitsu, and uh, smaller like startups uh, uh, like Byte, Rx Technologies, uh, and uh, and finally universities like Harocopio and uh, UPM from Spain. Um, GFT is the project coordinator, and the end uh, of the project is actually uh, end of this year. Okay, so we have passed all those phases. Um, and we are now in the final, let's say, uh, implementation phase of the second iteration. Okay, uh, this is a high-level technical architecture of um, of uh, uh, of the project. And um, uh, actually, for those of you that don't know, we separate it into different work packages. Okay, and as you can see, we have. Uh, um, these are the technical work packages. There are some others that are more uh, related with how the project is managed or how the exploitation is uh, is done. Um, on the technical side, we have the um, the user layer, the design environment, and uh, and function uh, uh, DevOps uh, phase. It's the higher level of uh, um, of the of the schema here. Uh, then we have the global continuum uh, uh, layer we, where we have all the platform uh, services. Uh, you can see here that uh, the T uh, represents the different tasks. So within the work packages, we have specific tasks that will come and uh, tackle particular uh, uh, functionalities or services. Um, and so uh, once we have uh, the different uh, uh, services on the platform layer uh, along with uh, you know we have the semantics the way to uh, to optimize the placement across the different clusters uh, data services and uh, the orchestration uh, we reach on the on the lower level the local level of uh, um, of the infrastructure where we uh, we discuss about uh, we we do a research about the the ways to do resource management, uh, placement optimization uh, in the level of, of, the, of a particular cluster, either edge or, or cloud. Okay. Uh, we have different pilots, uh, different uh, applications, uh, uh, large applications and uh, with, with real, uh, uh, real conditions. Uh, the first one is related to smart manufacturing uh, for increased resilience and interplay. Uh, we are talking about industry 4.0 um, uh, scenarios with edge and cloud uh, trying to be uh, uh, as um, resilient as possible. Uh, E-health uh, scenarios with um, um, artificial intelligence uh, um, and uh, predictive uh, uh, scenarios where uh, particular uh, um, data coming from uh, specific uh, uh, patients patients can be uh, actually uh, can give uh, results and predictions on how uh, they ca they can be treated and finally smart precision agriculture where we uh, we take into account digital twin uh, um, uh, scenarios and how we can take uh, into consideration different characteristics coming from uh, uh, smart farms such as uh, how we can better uh, control and uh, uh, take into account uh, the resources. So, for example, the water, uh, the um, pesticides that are used, and how this can be optimally uh, deployed uh, um, within the smart farm. Yeah. Um, now, if we go a little bit deeper into, uh, into the physics uh, environment, we have, um, first of all, what we wanted to do with the, develop, the, with the design environment is to enhance, abstract, and enrich 
the way someone will uh, uh, create its uh, fast application. Yeah? So um, how we can customize the function environment, we gave the ability to uh, the user uh, since this is uh, initially uh, something that will be installed on, on uh, their uh, PC uh, to, uh, to customize it as uh, much as possible through uh, Docker files and stuff like that. Uh, we simplified the creation of uh, complex functions, workflows, um, and this is for, for you, the, for, for people that already have used uh, serverless or FAS, uh, you may have noticed that, for example, in Lambda, you, you will need to uh, go through a, a big uh, YAML file in order to provide the different, uh, um, uh, the, the different characteristics of, uh, of the functions that you uh, need to uh, um, use. And, and in particular, we, we have cases where, you know, uh, you may have uh, applications composed by more than five functions. Yeah, so things start to be complicated. Um, and imagine even more if you need to do some joins, yeah? Uh, so with, uh, with a visual uh, environment, this is, what, this is something that we, we, we tackle here. Okay, so you can see in the, in the right here that it's much, uh, much simpler uh, to actually uh, uh, do the programming like this rather than that. Okay, we, we exploit uh, uh, reusable patterns. These are things that uh, I'm going to discuss also afterwards. Increase semantics and also um, specific, uh, we, we abstract complete, completely the packaging, the testing and the deployment. Okay, imagine for a, um, for users that are not that do not have these uh, uh, capabilities, um, that are more experts in coding, uh, if they need uh, this to be abstracted, this is a, a feature to uh, uh, to use here. Okay, uh, so these are the baseline technologies that we we have been using. So uh, Node-RED. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of it. It's a, an open source programming environment for event-driven applications. Yeah, and um, so we have taken this uh, as is and we have enhanced it with a specific palette of uh, annotations and particular uh, extensions that can uh, actually facilitate the user in, in execution uh, upon the continuum. Yeah? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit afterwards about uh, specific uh, extensions. And, um, and so Node-RED can be, can be used in this context uh, uh, as, uh, as a workflow orchestration, okay? Uh, but also as function with function execution abilities, okay? And uh, it can also be used as a choreographer uh, for a specific functions. So, so you can either uh, create your, uh, your flow and, uh, and build it as an image which will be then uh, deployed, or you can uh, be, uh, enable the execution of different functions, uh, physics functions within, uh, um, directly from Node-RED, okay? And in parallel, we use OpenWhisk, okay? Um, the open source fast platform, uh, which allows us to uh, to actually um, deploy upon uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, the images that uh, we will prepare uh, directly through uh, Node-RED. Um, okay, so this is a, the, a, the, how, uh, the, how is the design of, uh, uh, let's say, the, the local and the cloud environment uh, in terms of uh, uh, the preparation of uh, the, the life cycle of the artifacts, okay? Uh, so, um, initially what you get is uh, you get uh, three containers that are deployed uh, within your uh, local environment, yeah? And um, as I said, the Node-RED comes as it is and then we, we, we have uh, specific patterns and annotations that have been enhanced by physics, but we, we do not break the compatibility with just uh, add those within the palette. Yeah? Uh, we have the control uh, user interface and the serverless function generator, which actually provides us the, the, uh, the bridge towards uh, the, the cloud uh, platform, the cloud uh, environment, where we have the backend, which uh, enables us to, uh, um, uh, to take the code from the repository, uh, upload the, flo the flow to a bucket, and eventually trigger a, a Jenkins job uh, with the flow 
uh, which uh, will, uh, uh, in the end, uh, prepare the, the artifacts to be deployed by OpenWhisk, right? Um, so yeah, this is um, uh, the, the user interface that we can get uh, uh, for, from physics. Um, so you, through that, you can have the function creation, uh, the build uh, management, the testing, logging, etc. Uh, there is a video. If we have time, we can uh, we can check it afterwards. Uh, but uh, I will go through some of the uh, characteristics here. So uh, we have uh, uh, the view of uh, of Node of Node-RED uh, directly with all the different uh, annotations and patterns that uh, we can use, and um, by default the language uh, uh, where the, the different patterns are um, programmed in, uh, in Node-RED is, uh, Node is JavaScript, but um, in particular, since the, there is the support of, the, of uh, uh, Docker images, we can actually have uh, different types of uh, languages directly there. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, afterwards we can, once you have built your flow within the uh, Node-RED environment, you, you can uh, uh, come and check the build that has been done uh, within the, uh, directly from the admin panel, to, uh, panel of, the, um, of the physics application. And, uh, and here you can come and invoke a particular uh, execution which will then uh, uh, send it uh, in, in, the nest, in the according uh, um, cluster to be executed. There is also logging uh, information taking place directly with the, um, within the environment of, uh, uh, of the physics application. And you also have the ability to connect different flows within specific applications. Uh, so for example, if you may, you may want uh, uh, particular parts of an application to be executed on the same uh, on the same cluster. This is something that uh, you can uh, you can do. Okay. Um, okay. So um, what is interesting with physics is that uh, we we manage to enhance the palettes, the the, the different uh, uh, capabilities of uh, Node with uh, with specific patterns that are usually used and demanded uh, in the case of uh, more complex applications, okay, such as applications related to machine learning or applications related uh, that need to be executed uh, in a parallel mode uh, in, uh, in a multi-cluster environment. So these are things that by default were not treated, uh, are not treated within uh, node but we have enhanced it for reusability, manageability, and abstracted functionality, okay? So as you can see here, uh, there are things such as parallelization. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit after, afterwards about that um, with a split join scenario. Uh, things such as context management, you may need uh, to have a specific uh, action, a specific container that will share um, the context with another container being in the same uh, um, uh, being in the same flow, yeah. So this has been created uh, in advance, or things such as uh, how you can be, uh, uh, you can create a retry scenario when you want to uh, uh, save uh, uh, data within an object store, yeah. Um, uh, stuff such as uh, request management or uh, branch uh, join. These are things that uh, have been uh, introduced uh, within the physics uh, uh, palette. And um, because are used uh, and demanded in, uh, in a more complex uh, scenarios. Okay. Um, okay. So in, in the case of uh, the fork join parallelization, this is quite interesting because, um, as I said, uh, we start from a concept. Okay. The concept of how uh, we can start. Uh, let's say we can have an array of uh, inputs. Um, then we split this function into multiple uh, um, uh, multiple uh, functions. Uh, we have the fuzz uh, invoker that uh, will uh, will come and will deploy a number of containers uh, based on this uh, uh, split. And in the end, we have a, a function that will join 
with ag aggregate uh, all the all those uh, results okay and this this concept here is uh, implemented by this uh, complex let's say uh, uh, flow which is then uh, created as a as a single function okay so in the end when you want to use it you just uh, need to drag and drop this particular box and uh, the user just, just needs to parameterize it in order to have uh, the, the, the result uh, we, we, uh, we implemented here. Okay? And this is something that is uh, actually quite used, especially in, uh, in uh, complex uh, cases such as uh, machine learning or uh, you know, where you want to uh, improve the performance of a particular uh, execution. Yeah? And uh, we have also different uh, uh, cap capabilities uh, here, such as uh, you create different functions or, or you may create different threads within the same uh, functions or different processes uh, within the same container, right? Depending on where you are executing. Um, okay, other uh, semantic nodes uh, that are interesting to mention here is uh, things such as uh, affinity, anti-affinity. Uh, these are things that you, uh, you, you may use uh, quite often in, uh, in scenarios where um, uh, you have uh, uh, sharing of uh, functions uh, within the same uh, nodes or you prefer not to put them in the same nodes. Uh, locality of functions. Uh, you may prefer that a particular part of your application is executed uh, at the edge if you have uh, data privacy issues, for example, or uh, uh, that a particular part uh, needs uh, the cloud if it needs uh, high performance, for example. Um, the importance, uh, high, medium, low for prioritization, optimization goal, uh, you may have different demands in terms of performance energy. Uh, function sizing, uh, demanding particular resources, okay, these are things that are uh, treated, the requirements of uh, the architecture, um, and things such as uh, how to, to link uh, particular data services. Okay, now, uh, if we go a little bit into detail on how, how things uh, function uh, internally uh, in, uh, you know, in the infrastructure, layer we do use kubernetes okay uh, okay d open shift uh, um, we uh, we we use submariner for the connection um, of uh, of the clusters we use open cluster management for the setup uh, the multi cluster setup uh, we have evaluated uh, and uh, uh, using microsoft for uh, lower f uh, footprint uh, kubernetes devices uh, of course, uh, Prometheus for monitoring. Um, we use uh, OpenWhisk and we have uh, started evaluating also K-Native for uh, function as a service, but mainly OpenWhisk at this time, at this moment. Um, and then we, 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 we take into account, we use uh, Kubernetes operators and webhooks uh, in order to, uh, to manage how the components will run on top of uh, uh, Kubernetes. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is uh, a schema on, uh, on how these uh, um, are set up, uh, uh, let's say, in our multi-cluster environment. Uh, you see uh, different clusters here. Uh, the, the hub cluster has the OCM, Submariner allows the connection, and then uh, we have uh, the semantics uh, coming, uh, you know, giving the description of uh, the resources of particular nodes. Um, and now if we check how the function registration takes place, we start from a workflow uh, CRD, okay, which uh, uh, gets uh, the first uh, demand of, of what we need to, to execute. Um, then we get the object uh, in a, um, directly from a managed uh, cluster. Uh, we, we trigger the reconciliation loop in a workflow CRD operator. And, and this will allow us to, uh, to, to register the function within OpenWhisk, okay? And, uh, and eventually store it within uh, ETCD on the local cluster and uh, on the OCM so that we can uh, be able to track it afterwards, yeah? And now once this is uh, done, then uh, in, the ter in terms of a fu a function execution, we have uh, uh, 
we have the execution of function which is uh, triggered uh, uh, within OpenWhisk. Uh, if there is already a hot uh, container uh, uh, there, a hot pod, uh, then we can uh, actually use it or else a new pod is needed and hence uh, we go through the webhook and the webhook is going to allow us to, uh, to uh, it's going to enable us uh, specific annotations for a particular scheduler and this is something that uh, we, we will talk also afterwards on how um, uh, on specific schedulers that we have uh, implemented that would allow us to, to, to make uh, some um, optimizations going beyond uh, the image layer that uh, uh, is implemented within Kubernetes uh, and taking into account the layers of, uh, of uh, containers. Uh, and so once this is done, then we have uh, uh, the particular uh, annotations related to the particular scheduler. Uh, we have also collocation annotations such as uh, we want to prefer to have uh, um, uh, collocation between a specific function or not. And, uh, and, then, and then the particular uh, uh, pod is, uh, is created on uh, on a part, the particular function is created upon a particular pod deployed on a specific node. Yeah. Okay, so um, if we check a little bit the some uh, performance aspects, we have done some uh, uh, experiments and uh, some that uh, were interesting to show here. Uh, we have uh, triggered uh, workflows uh, related to uh, open whisk uh, sequences of, of functions. Okay, uh, we have also triggered uh, um, uh, workflows with uh, uh, full primitives and intra-container parallelization. So in this case, uh, we have a particular we have within the local environment of Node-RED, uh, we have the function. Uh, the different functions which are triggered directly uh, by by Node-RED uh, in the local environment, and finally we, we can we we have the full uh, parallelization directly uh, by the OpenWhisk uh, uh, interface, which can uh, deploy uh, different uh, uh, containers uh, directly on uh, the different clusters. Yeah. Okay, and in, in these scenarios, we have uh, measured uh, how, uh, what are the, the, um, the delays that we get in, in uh, those three uh, scenarios. And uh, as a matter of fact, it's, it's interesting to see that, of course, if we are in a Node-RED environment, uh, this, this delay is uh, minimal. Okay, so if, you, if we want to test something very fast, uh, but with limited parallelization only within the, the same container, uh, then this will be uh, quite uh, um, quite fast to, to deploy. Whereas in the case of uh, of the other two, the open whisk cases, then you know we are talking about 100 milliseconds of uh, of delay to, to deploy the actual containers. Yeah. Um, and some other uh, interesting uh, measurements here related to uh, um, to the space time continuum. Okay, where we we have. Uh, um, we have checked th things such as the network latency. Okay, we have uh, three different clusters. Uh, one that we consider as edge, a small uh, machine uh, located in Greece. Another one, uh, and two others that are more uh, like uh, cloud uh, uh, machines. The one is on AWS, and the other one on Azure. And uh, and through through the experiments, we 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 have started to. Uh, uh, to uh, get uh, uh, you know answers about uh, you know what are the configurations that we have done and uh, if they were correct or or not. So, for example, in terms of latency, we can see here that the execution of uh, um, of uh, the um, uh, of the particular functions in, in in here it was related with artificial intelligence cases of uh, of uh, our e-health uh, application. Uh, we can see here that it was much faster, of course, uh, since it was the edge uh, case. Uh, it was executed in Greece. And then we have, uh, uh, since the, uh, the call was, made, uh, was done from Greece, uh, it was, the latency was, uh, much, uh, was smaller uh, to reach uh, uh, the Netherlands on the Azure cluster and uh, bigger to, to reach Sweden 
which is uh, the other cluster. Um, other in interesting things were uh, the fact that uh, uh, in, in the waiting time, uh, we had uh, a, a long uh, waiting time for, um, uh, for Azure cluster here. Uh, and this was uh, because we haven't configured uh, well uh, the, the memory uh, of, uh, uh, of OpenWhisk. Uh, even if we had 32 gigabytes of RAM available, uh, we, had, uh, uh, we had only configured uh, two, two, megabyte, two gigabytes of RAM for, uh, uh, to be dealt uh, by OpenWhisk, okay? And this, uh, this was uh, uh, the further the, the difference we had between uh, uh, AWS and, uh, and Azure there. there. Okay, um, let's, let's talk about some uh, uh, specific uh, extensions that we have, uh, we have done uh, in terms of scheduling. Um, so we have been uh, using, okay, uh, we have been using um, uh, so two different levels of, uh, of schedulers, one in the global continuum and another one in the local uh, continuum, in the local uh, level. Um, and so these uh, uh, both uh, were uh, um, implemented in, in the two different layers. Uh, we have uh, the first one uh, was actually uh, uh, related to uh, how we can have multi-objective uh, scheduling uh, with taking into account performance and energy, whereas the second one is more related on uh, how we can uh, improve uh, um, uh, the, and minimize the cold starts, taking into account the layers locality, not only the image locality. Okay, uh, and this implementation has uh, is uh, is currently ongoing, and we are in contact with uh, uh, the upstream Kubernetes uh, community in order to push uh, these changes uh, in uh, in the um, in the mainstream uh, in the upstream version. Okay. So uh, a, a last thing, and this is my last slide, uh, one of the things that is interesting with uh, this type of project is that we have uh, implemented reusable artifacts, okay, in the marketplace. There is a marketplace that people can use, and there you can fi find a catalog of uh, available artifacts, uh, operators, node red flows, data sets, uh, semantic models, and stuff like that, and people can actually test uh, directly. Okay, so thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. No questions? <laughs>